Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. Today, we are asking the simple question of, is binge culture problematic for streaming services? A lot of creators have touched on this subject in the past. In fact, some of them have gone so far as to call binge culture anti-consumer. Now, there is an argument to be made about releasing weekly versus releasing everything all at once, but let's actually dive into this argument before getting a little ahead of ourselves. So what spurred this video is that news broke that Netflix may be steering away from binge releasing for some of their shows. We've already seen this in action with the release of Stranger Things Season 4 being released in two parts. Also, both Ozark Season 4 and Masters of the Universe Revelation were released the same way. For Masters of the Universe Revelations, that led to a lot of backlash given the fact that the main character was killed off in the first episode. I Kevin Smith at the time, instead of putting the heat on Netflix for the release strategy, told all of the critics to grow the fuck up. His words, not mine. You could argue that by the time part two of Masters of the Universe Revelations came out, no one cared. Eventually, you learn to stop touching the hot stove if it keeps burning you. Unless if you're a masochist, and then, well, well, you need help. Um, but aside from Masters of the Universe Revelations controversy, honestly ask yourself, has Ozark or Stranger Things Season 4 being released in two parts made the shows better? On one hand, you could make the argument that releasing an entire season at once only guarantees that everyone talks about it for a week and then moves on. The argument that I'm making is this is a problem that has been misdiagnosed. Everyone has been so preoccupied with the idea that binge culture is anti-consumer because it kills hype and any potential for future seasons. What they haven't been focusing on is maybe, just maybe, the problem is not with binge culture. Maybe the problem is with the streaming shows themselves. So let's explore that angle for a little bit. If you ever watch a streaming show, the vast majority of them are just extended movies divided into 7 to 10 chapters. Let me explain, and I know before I go any further that some streaming shows are not doing this like the iCarly revival on Paramount Plus or Star Trek Lower Decks, but those shows are the exception and not the rule. About 10 years ago, there was a real push in television to get rid of the quote-unquote filler episodes and just focus on the narrative. And there were some shows that definitely had more filler episodes that we could do without looking at you, The Walking Dead. But cutting, but cutting out these filler episodes has come with some disastrous consequences. People forget that television shows were more character driven and not narrative driven. Movies in particular had to sacrifice a lot of character development because they had to tell their story within two hours most of the time. So characters not being well defined beyond, beyond archetypes are, are the norm in movies. But television opened up more possibilities. You could have episodes that are just dedicated to one or two characters. The best example of this is Avatar The Last Airbender. In the first season, we had the episode The Storm, which recalled how Aang became the Avatar and how Zuko got his fireball scar. That's all, that, that's all the episode was, but that wasn't the only episode of the show to focus on nothing but characters. Other episodes include Zuko Alone, Avatar Day, The Tales of Ba Sing Se, The Beach, The Avatar and the Fire Lord, etc, etc. There's more, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to end the list there. The problem with streaming shows is that there aren't any real standalone episodes. If you watch Cobra Kai, for example, you have to watch the entire season from beginning to end in order to get any sort of payoff. None of those episodes can really stand on their own because they're structured in a way that you have to watch the next episode in hopes that a payoff is coming for a setup in the current episode you're watching. Going back to that list of Avatar The Last Airbender episodes, assuming that you've seen the show, once I read the names of those episodes, those episodes probably, pro probably popped right into your head. How? Because all of those Avatar The Last Airbender episodes could stand on their own two feet. One of the biggest issues with with not with the, one of the biggest issues with none of these streaming services making standalone episodes for these streaming shows is that not a single episode from a show like Cobra Kai can stick out in your mind. You probably remember the entire season, 
but not any individual episodes. Going back to Avatar The Last Airbender, you could binge five episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender back to back to back to back and get a different episode each time, assuming that you're not watching any two-part episodes like The Boiling Rock or Winter Solstice or Day of Black Sun. You don't have to watch The Cave of Two Lovers to watch Return to Amashu. The idea that you have to watch the next episode to get more buildup on top of buildup is antithetical to television. All that does is it puts pressure on the season finale to deliver the payoff for all of this buildup. But it still leaves the problem of none of these episodes can stand on their own two feet. They are all reliant on that season finale to deliver the ultimate payoff. The best example of a disappointment was Jupiter's Legacy. It was eight episodes for the first season, other than a really good origin story for how the Union formed, it has some half-baked ideas in the modern day of these rules that you create in the 1930s don't hold up today, while also setting a brainwave, the Utopian's brother, to stab his own brother in the back, set up the Utopian to basically be Julius Caesar. It's a great setup, but there was absolutely no fucking payoff. And there will never be any payoff because Jupiter's Legacy was cancelled after the first fucking season. Would releasing Jupiter's Legacy weekly have solved the problems? No, because the structure of the show was still broken, all set up with no payoff. No matter how Netflix released it, it was still going to disappoint. You can put lipstick on a pig, but at the end of the day, it's still a pig. I want to end this video off with a solution rather than leave the argument hanging. I've already answered the question in a long-winded response. Binge culture is not the problem. The shows are the problem. What's the solution? It's simple. Make TV shows again. Stop making these shows like Jupiter's Legacy where it's all set up and no payoff, but a payoff will come in a future season if the show doesn't get canceled. Stop making shows like Cobra Kai where none of the episodes can stand on their own two feet. Start making these shows focus on smaller scale conflicts in conjunction to the major conflict. Going back to my Avatar The Last Airbender example, The Storm, Zuko Alone, Avatar Day, The Tales of Bossing Say, The Beach, The Avatar and the Fire Lord are all highly rated episodes of the show, despite the fact that they are all smaller in scale by comparison to other episodes like Day of Black Sun, The Drill, Crossroads of Destiny, The Library, the list goes on and on. Releasing shows weekly might get your show talked about every every week for the two months that you're releasing it, but if there isn't anything if there isn't anything there beyond that, what's the point? Is anyone still talking about Loki despite that show ending its run back in 2021? How about Miss Marvel? How about Moon Knight? How about The Mandalorian? All of those shows released weekly on Disney Plus, yet once their runs ended, no one was really talking about them a week after the finales for those shows came out. So, all Disney did by releasing their shows weekly was delay the inevitable. If these streaming companies like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, etc. want their shows to keep getting talked about even after their runs are over, it's simple. Make standalone episodes that people can go back and watch. Television has done that for fucking decades. What else is going to make you watch those two episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation on BBC America or the Sci-Fi Channel if those episodes weren't both standalone and decent? What's the difference between Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and any of the MCU shows on Disney Plus? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. cultivated a fan base over seven seasons and it was still one of the most talked about Marvel shows even after the release of the MCU shows. In fact, there was demand to release Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on Disney+. Plus. The Marvel shows releasing weekly or all at once is not going to fix the problem. Disney and Marvel have to start making their shows actually be shows and not just extended movies divided into six to ten chapters. And that's where I'm going to end this video, folks, before I drag this out way longer than it needs to be. I believe I answered the question, granted in a long-winded format, binge culture is not the problem, the shows are the problem. Like I said earlier, you can put lipstick on a pig, but at the end of the day, it's still a pig.